Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I'm going to set up my 13 containers. This is year number five for growing peppers. They're sunken containers, bottoms are cut out. Why do you do this? You can really conserve your resources. Put the good stuff right in the containers. Plants do really well, two peppers per pot. So in this small footprint, it's gonna be uh, 26 pepper plants. I'll show you the dimensions of the container, give you an idea of how you might wanna set this up for yourself. But really fitting in 26 peppers in here Super productive. It's a great way to grow pepper plants and other plants in your garden. The bottoms are cut out at least halfway, sunken into the ground about halfway. Functions a little bit like a raised bed. This area warms up a little bit sooner than maybe some of the ground beds that I have around here. Perfect for peppers. All the resources go right into the container. You save money that way. You set up the container with all the good stuff. The roots grow into the ground. The worms come up. They take the compost. They move it through the bottom of this area. So the plants do really well. Of course, I'll clean this up. I want to just give you an idea about the size of the container. Something like this. This is 12 inches across, about 12 inches deep. A little bit smaller is fine, larger is perfectly fine. And then in here, you would just cut out, you know, maybe a circle right in the middle, about, you know, half of the bottom. Roots are gonna come out the side. They're gonna come out the hole you put in there. Worms will get in there. These are just nursery pots. I tell all my kind of family, well, not kind of, but <laughs> my family and my friends, whenever they get nursery pots or you're putting in bushes or trees, save them for me and I use them in the garden. This would get sunken down to at least a third, maybe half the way and we can plant up. So let me clean this up and we'll talk more about growing vegetables in a sunken container garden. It only took about 10 minutes to clean it up. That's why I also like growing in the sunken containers. I will be putting mulch down. I take a weed whacker, just clear the weeds out down that side, put the mulch down. It's really easy to maintain. There's a nice pile of stuff. I'll get to that later. So this is a better idea of, of just how small of a footprint it is. You can see that I use shredded hardwood on top. It's great to mulch. So we're gonna come back. I'm gonna put down a handful or two of any organic granular fertilizer. I'll show you that. If you have compost, a shovel full of compost. This is a little bit of what it'll look like when it's done. These are super hot peppers, so I have a cold frame around them, and I put this top on. Heats it up a lot more here, even though it's warm enough for them to grow. Gives them that extra heat because they're slow growers. So this is one way I'm growing super hot. So let me just spin back around here slowly. Again, 13 pots right down here, 26 pepper plants. All right, let's get to setting them up or re refreshing them for this year. We'll get to planting in a second. So here's how I set up the containers. It's pretty straightforward. You can see that I have mulch in there. You don't really want to mix large wood chips down into the center of your container or really in your garden. So I take the wood chips first, move them over to there. Inside or in the container, one handful or two of any organic granular fertilizer. They're mostly the same. You just want to have N, P, and K represented. So that is one big handful thrown right in there. I also like to put in a shovel full of compost. This is my own leaf mold or leaf compost that I make here um, at the homestead. Any compost will work. You want to leave a little bit of space in the container so that you can mulch later. And you can mulch with grass clippings, anything you really want to use. Being my own stuff, I got tree seeds sprouting in there. Let me switch hands real quick. And all you're going to do is just loosen this up to about halfway into the container. Just mix everything in. You never want to plant your plants right on top of any kind of fertilizer, organic granular fertilizer. And it'll be, you know, just something like this. Break up any root balls, toss out any weeds. But it's really nice stuff. You can just concentrate all your good quality materials in here and it's just going to be wonderful. It's going to hold a lot of water. So what I would do is exactly what I did right in this space. And then coming over here, I would take the wood chips, throw them back throw them on right here. back on here, and then when we plant, I'll just move them out of the way. So I'm taking a lot of the bigger pieces of wood and just putting them into the container that's finished. And I'll work my way all the way down. And again, you don't have to over worry about the amount of the organic granular you're putting on here. 
It is all organic. It breaks down slowly, slowly feeds your plants. We're just going to mix that in well again. And then another shovel full of compost. We're going to water this in with a water-soluble fertilizer. In the video description, I will put in one of my garden rambling series um, later last summer so that you can watch it and you can see actually how big the peppers get. They do really, really well. The uh, garden rambling series are, are usually 20 to 30 minutes, but it just gives you updates on how my garden's doing and it just shows off the different videos and progress of plants, you know, from that year. All right, let's set this up and we'll get to planting two peppers per container. One more thing that um, I think is important. Like I was saying, this is going on its fourth or fifth year. If you have soil, and my soil is normally heavy clay, I will link a video, actually in the video description too, that shows you how to prep a hole that is kind of like heavy clay soil. But you want to use your earth because it's the cheapest way to do it. But if it's not the best quality for whatever reason, you can get a bale of peat moss. There isn't a whole lot of nutritional value in peat moss, but it really helps problematic soil. It holds moisture, loosens it up. So you would put in a shovel full of the peat moss and you would just mix it through. That's gonna hold moisture. It's gonna loosen up, you know, compact soils. And it's a good way to start and you save money if you're just putting in kind of maybe your first garden or things aren't the best. Compost is always wonderful. If you have a lot of compost, first time garden, mix in a lot of compost with that clay soil or that imperfect soil and it'll take care of the problem. But you can definitely use peat moss, just like I showed you, and just mix it through. We're going to plant two pepper plants per container. And you can see I just worked my way down and you know set up the containers. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the peppers. Start with the basic hole, nothing fancy. I grow two peppers in a larger container. This way I don't have to really pot them up and then I can just bring them out here. Loosen the root ball. You're gonna to plant to just a little bit above maybe where the starting mix is. You can go a little bit higher if you don't get it perfect. And then I'm just going to backfill around that. Keeping the wood chips, you know, on the top inch or two, press it in. And that's all you have to do to really plant two peppers per sunken container. We'll come back, water it in with a water-soluble fertilizer, and I'm just gonna work my way down with all my different peppers, set this up, less than 20 minutes to get everything prepped. I'm also gonna mulch and do all that. Done and transformed. One of my favorite parts of gardening is taking a space that you kind of let go, because it was the end of the season, and then you kind of bring it back to life. Mulch on the outside, both sides, I think it looks great. Keeps the weeds down. With a sunken container garden, the roots go down and they also start working their way out. But more importantly, this will decay, break down, get into the soil, get beneath your container garden. Worms will move stuff around. So mulch is also providing food and it's a nice slow way of kind of having a organic matter wood break down, supply N, P, and K to your plants. I'm not going to mulch in the containers yet. I'm actually waiting for my grass to continue to grow because a lot of weed seeds are in there now. I'm going to wait till that, that kind of phase passes and then I'll be putting in maybe an inch or two of green grass to start. When it's green you only want one or two inches. Let it dry, turn brown, and then when that's done you can put some more grass on there. And that will provide nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium to your plants also. But we loaded this up with the organic granular. Maybe you put in some compost. Now we're going to do the water-soluble fertilizer. I recommend I just wanted to cut in here real quick and show you the tomato cages. I forgot to talk about them. They're in there for support, of course. Peppers can be fragile. You know, a windstorm could damage them. The cages provide support. But they're also a great way to really allow the use of a shade cloth. So I have shade cloth there over my broccoli to keep it cooler as the heat's rolling in. Midsummer, even though peppers love the heat, too much heat, too much sun can shut them down. So I will drape a shade cloth down here that will keep the soil cooler mid to late July. They will continue to produce and it's just a good way to keep crops going that sometimes shut down because they think drought conditions are coming or it just gets way too hot. So the tomato cages serve two functions. I recommend AgroThrive. You can check out the video description for that. Something organic, you can use fish emulsion. Water soluble means it's gonna be immediately available, available to the plant. Two gallons, just follow the instructions. I wanna show you how much to give each plant. People sometimes get confused. Just a good soaking, something like that. That's all they need. We've given these a lot of fertilizer. We're gonna mulch, 
You don't really have to feed these or over love them. Just let them go now. Maybe mid-season or when they're starting to flower, you give them a little bit more water-soluble fertilizer. But it looks, I mean, it looks wonderful. If you're interested in these metal labels, I sell these at my seed shop. So we'll just take a quick move down. Facing Heaven, Anaheim Chili, Poblanos, Early Jalapeno, Jalapeno M, Red Hot Cherry, Serrano, Peppercinis, Italian, and Abagio. These are to be announced, and I wanted to just show you what I have over here. So this is all hot peppers. So 13 containers, it'll be 26 plants, and then these are my super hots. Red Hab, Habanero, Carolina Reaper, Scorpion, Ghost Pepper, and another variety of Habanero. Turn around slowly so I don't make you motion sick. I really like how it looks. Highly recommend the sunken containers. It's a great way to conserve resources, plant in a small space. This is maybe 18 inches wide, a foot, 13, th maybe 16 feet long, 18 feet long. 26 pepper plants. You can't really beat that. They do really well. Check out the video description for one of my rambling videos. If you watch that, you'll see how well these peppers did last year in the space. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And if you have space, try a sunken container. You'll really like how peppers take off in there and how many you can get in such a small space. Thanks for watching.